Call the meeting to order. We are all present this evening, all seven of us. Tonight, our invocation will be given by Paula Nightingale and our pledge. Billy, how about giving us a pledge this evening, or leading us in the pledge? Paula? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in this city the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Thank you. John, you pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance Pledges to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four, consider approval of minutes of the regular session, July the 16th, 2013. I will make that motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion by Mike, a second by Ron. Further discussion, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Under item five, awards, presentations, and organizational business. Item 5.1 presents bed available for adoption at the city animal shelter. Good evening. My name is Officer Jared, Unit Animal Patrol. With me today, I have a hound, hound mix actually. Uh, we named her Lucille. She's probably about a two to four month um, dog that we have in the shelter. We have about three of them in there. She's one of the three that we do have, and they are available for adoption right now. We encourage everybody to spread the word, you know, make adoptions rise, and we look forward to all coming to the shelter, even to visit, and just spread the word to people, because people need to know they can adopt the dogs that we do have, and cats too. So somebody come in and adopt Lucille, because she really needs a good home. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Item number two, we're going to recognize the Youth Job Corps. Eric, is that you? It is, Mr. Mayor. If I could ask you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, step right down there to, uh, to the microphone, and I want to call up the names of folks that have done some tremendous work for us this summer. Commissioners, as you know, each year we have a, a Summer Youth Job Corps. Uh, this is the, uh, Jacob, this is the third year, isn't it? Uh, this was actually derived from a meeting that we had with some youth who opined that there were few opportunities for employment in the summer given their ages. So we designed a 16 and older uh, job corps and this uh, program is designed to expose our youth to the workings of city council. Uh, in that uh, effort, which is uh, <laughs> headed up and orchestrated by uh, uh, Jacob Foos, we offer leadership training. We even do a little bit of advising on finances, resume writing, the, the importance of school instruction, a visit with the lieutenant governor, and um, an exposure to a number of functions in the city. And I think the, uh, the attitude at the end of that is always the same. There's a whole lot more that goes on in this city than I could have, ha could have thought. So Louis Leanne Watt, come and join the mayor, please. Israel Schreiber? Right yeah, if you could stay right there, Louis. <coughs> Israel Schreiber? Did, is Israel here tonight, Jacob? Yeah, she only has two students tonight, sir. She has two emergency spots. Okay, who's, who yeah, else is? Claudio Ferrer. Yeah, I saw Claudio. There you are. Claudio Ferrer. <coughs> Mayor, I have two of uh, these two items for you. If you were... Now, Claudio, you get to speak first, but like I told you when I hired you, you got to talk. <laughs> Turn around and face those people just like we taught you. 
the youth golf course program was a great opportunity. Um, I was happy to get in, but I was even happier whenever I got to job shadow a lot of people and do some things. And just like Mr. Benson said, there's a lot of things that happened that you didn't know happened. And even how complex the city is and how everything you know, needs to get done right. And if one thing goes wrong, you know, a lot of things can go after that and just one little thing, <laughs> one little mess can create a whole big problem. And then how you fix that problem, it, it's, it's a really amazing city and it was a great experience. <laughs> uh, um, it taught us a lot of things. We gained a lot of knowledge. And for me, as a newcomer in the city, uh, it showed me a lot of stuff about our city and <coughs> helped me get to know more about the people and how the city works. And it is really a great opportunity to be a part of the city. Now, it's not one of these two young folks are, and then they are that. When they first came to us, it was difficult to get them to string three words together. <laughs> uh, the success of Jacob's tutelage has been most self evident. We're very proud of both of you. Claudio, Mr. Stugat, Congratulations, kiddo. Charlie, can I ask you to come up here and assist the mayor in passing out these other Mr. Mayor, uh, Dana, don't we have some pictures to show? I think you all realize that one of the biggest improvements in our quality of life in our community has been the opening and the development of Champion Park. And this park was designed by our own uh, Whitney Box. It, it was a tremendous effort of collaboration, not only by private industry, but you'll notice that every segment of this is not only community involvement, but it's led by City of Enid employees. They uh, not only leveled the ground, they also installed the drainage uh, work that, that supports the, the pad. They poured all the concrete for the sidewalks, all of which are ADA compliant. They installed the uh, sprinkler systems. And going back to the date that Whitney installed with the help of the community uh, uh, Labor Day, they also uh, helped supervise and manage that operation. This was a tremendous effort in some of the hottest period of the city's uh, <laughs> summer. It was a tremendous effort that took a lot of time after work and on weekends, and we sought and received volunteers to do this. It is testament to the skill of the city workers, and I want to recognize them by name. And as your name's called, please come forward. I know that not all of you are here tonight. But it was a tremendous effort. I got something for each of you. Chester Martin, are you here? Yeah. I thought you were. Larry Bartlett, Larry Henneke, yes, Darl Thorpe, Jeff Hatfield. I think Jeff's out driving a dozer tonight. Mike Aguilar, Brian Bruce, yes, David Cash, Earl Hidden, Bill Cooper, Walter Wright, Daryl Hoskins, Leroy Buffum, and their supervisor, Jerry Crawford, and also Melvin Key. Can you come up here as well? There's always an incredible challenge, just as uh, Mr. Farrar mentioned. There's, this is a, it takes a lot of effort to do things right, and this crew right here does it right the first time every time. I'm very proud of these gentlemen. Please join me in a round of uh, applause. <laughs> What's your favorite part about the, that effort, Jerry? Uh, trying to keep the rain off around us to start. <laughs> I was going to, I thought you were going to say there wasn't a favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on a couple there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of effort and a tremendous amount of uh, sweat went into this project. If you go by there on any given day, the, the, the utilization of the park triples that of the splash pad. It says quite a bit about the desire for parks and features. You're going to get a chance to do this again, fellas. Get some rest. <laughs> <laughs>
job security. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, under hearings, item 6.1, conduct a hearing rezoning property in the northwest quarter of section two, township 22 north, range six west of the Indian Meridian, located at 4701 East Willow, from A, Agriculture District, to I-2, Light Industrial District, Chris. Thank you, Mayor, City Commissioners. This is located in the northeast part of our city, right here represented by the star. This next slide shows you an aerial photo. This is a well-established oil company, Magellan, in our community. They've had a tank farm uh, in Enid for as long as I can remember. And uh, it's always been zoned agriculture. And what they are asking for this evening is in yellow be changed to I-2. That'll allow them to develop some um, areas in their site up in this area to where they can actually have an oil field service equipment uh, uh, addition to their existing tank farm business. Right to the uh, east of the site is <coughs> And that is what I have on that presentation. Uh, the comprehensive plan already had it designated as high intensity industrial use, so the land use change is required. Uh, we've gone through the planning commission, we've notified all the surrounding property owners, we received no protest. It's our recommendation to you to be done the property for agricultural I2. Chris, do the tanks remain there? Yes, sir. I don't know if there's anyone signed up for this item, but this is a hearing, so. I'll yield the floor. Uh, Chris, the question I got today is how could that be zoned agricultural with those tanks on it? Don't have the answer for that, sir. Uh, I imagine that <laughs> the tank farm I, uh, occurred long before the city had zoning, and it was just never addressed until today. Makes sense. Good answer. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Item seven, under community development. Item 7.1, <coughs> consider an ordinance rezoning property in the northwest quarter of section two, township 22 north, range six west of the Indian Meridian, located at 4701 East Willow from A, Agricultural District, to I-2, Light Industrial District. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to approve that ordinance. Second. Motion by Mike, a second by Ben. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 7.2, <clears throat> consider approval of the final plat for Skyview Estates, blocks 13 through 15. Chris. Thank you, Mayor. City Commissioners, uh, this is in the northwest part of our city, right by the star. The next slide gives you the aerial photo. Here is Willow. Down below off the screen would be Chestnut. This right here is the half section line, so that's one half mile there. Uh, right over here where the pointer is, is the uh, part of the Pheasant Run Golf community, so that gives you some idea where this is at. This is the last phase of uh, Skyview Estates. It'll actually connect the existing part that we're all familiar with to Feitner's addition just south of the half section line which is desirable. Now we have a uh, north-south street that'll go all the way from Willow to Chestnut that's not a part of our arterial system. Um, this is where, a good example of where the developer over many years uh, preliminarily platted all of that out, but then under final plats did different phases. This is his last phase. It represents three blocks and a total of 15 lots, and that's what the plat looks like. It's recommended for approval. Make a motion to approve the final plat. Motion by Mike. Second. 
Are you Ron? Yes, it was. Second by Ron. Further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. For item 8, administration 8.1, presentation on the Parks and Recreation Department. Rob? Mayor, City Commissioners, City Manager, just want to give you an update on the uh, Park and Recreational Department and just where we're at. Um, before the end of the year or end of the budget cycle, you um, requested that certain equipment be purchased for the park and just want to give you an update of where we are and where we are in the um, Park and Recreational Department. Can you uh, get that full screen? Okay, as you can see, this is the list that we gave you as part of the equipment that we suggested for the implementation of the um, park equipment. As of right now, um, the flail mower, the um, solid waste park equipment, the poly carts, everything, almost everything is, is either purchased or that we currently have. The red is, is on ordered, and the purple is on uh, that we are currently using correctly right now. As of right now, these are the ETAs of that equipment to be purchased and owned by the city of Enid. We don't necessarily purchase it until we get that equipment in hand. <coughs> um, the items that are not on the uh, purchased or ordered uh, items are items that we felt like um, it wasn't to the best of the department as of as is structured right now, so that was money that was not wasted and that was encumbered for the rest of the year. Total cost of all that equipment was about seven, um, $701,000, okay? And this is a picture of all the equipment that we purchased on the truck, <coughs> the uh, tractor, the trailers, the mules, the um, watering equipment, and the t um, mowers. When we began the Park and Recreational Department, we also gave you a status of um, what we thought needed to be run for that uh, department. We talked about a Park and Recreational Supervisor, Assistant Supervisor, Event Coordinator, and the following uh, people to help us out with the park. As you can see from the, um, the recommendation from the City Manager and Mayor that these guys were actually laying equipment and putting down um, concrete these are these are people that we need to help make our park grow and be successful uh, these are the budgetary items that we put down for that uh, year and currently um, this is how many people that we have unfilled we've got have these jobs posted but yet these items people are not hired within the um, pu public works or park system right now so currently we are seven people down in the park and recreational Um, but even though that we are down, we are still working with the park and recreational people throughout the city of Enid. Uh, currently, we are um, coordinating with the EJRT football team. We are mowing their fields, and um, with their coordination, we're going to work with them in actually striping the fields, helping them schedule the fields. We aren't, um, I don't want to be very clear on this, that we are not scheduling for them. We're just scheduling the use of the fields. We are not trying to take over anybody's uh, entity or anybody's sporting rules, but we are just helping them in um, maintaining the park and the recreation uh, sites that they quarterly work at. So we work with them and we try to do the best in keeping up the area that they are working at. The next entity that we are working with is the Enid Soccer Club. Um, we're working on maintenance with them and uh, when we get caught up with all the mowing, um, we will be mowing their facility as well. Um, again, we work with the Adult Softball League. Currently, they are working to get the National Softball League Tournament to bring to Enid. Uh, they have done a lot of the work. <coughs> I'm not gonna <coughs> I'm shadow them at all. They have done a lot of work for that uh, facility, but Again, we're working with them. They needed some help with the lights, and they needed help with the scoreboard, so we are working with them to help make that park a success. And that's what our job is, is to make every park, make every entity, every sporting facility 
uh, success for the city of Eden. And that's our job. Um, with that, with any other entities that I have not mentioned, we're sending contact letters out to those entities and we'll meet with them, discuss with them, kind of see, okay, what, are, what is the best strategy to help you, help us, help make this facility the best facility Enid has? And we'll make those agreements and then we'll live by those <coughs> And then um, we'll just continue and maintain and improve the parks as we go along. So that's where we are right now with the, uh, the Park and Recreational Department. You guys have any questions? Questions? Uh, Rob, how's the assimilation been with some of those entities? Has that been fairly smooth? It's been very smooth. Um, a lot of them are like, yes, we needed that help. And, I, and, I, and it's getting to the point where people like the recreation part, you know. Um, you know, years ago it was like, that. that's what our pastime was. We're gonna go out there and just maintain the fields. Well, now people wanna enjoy those fields. They wanna go out and do all the work for it. They wanna see their kids play. Some people like like going out there and doing that, but they wanna have, they wanna enjoy the facility. So we're just taking on the responsibilities of helping them make those facilities what they envision as well as the city. And, and is there not room for all of those personalities in this plan? Yes, there, there's huge rooms, and we're, and we're not trying to dictate to anybody. I just want to make that very clear. We're trying to work with them. We're trying to come up with an, with an understanding of what's going to happen at these facilities. We're not trying to take over anything. We're just trying to make those facilities a better place for everybody. Where are we on the new playground equipment? On the new playground equipment, um, I'm just going to have to say, it's, it's just a plan. As of right now, we haven't um, gone to a certain plan. We've looked at the park board suggestions. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, from what I understand on that plan, is that we would look at that, at that suggestion, work with city um, officials, and also the area that that park goes into for the, the families and citizens that live around that area, so put their input into it. And then we come together as a unit that says, this is what's gonna be at this park. Sure, I just, you know, that's $750,000 is, that's gonna take a lot of time to get all that moving in a fiscal year, and I just wanna make sure that we are getting aggressive with that It'll progress. It'll go a lot quicker than you think it will. It, 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 it is amazing. One part takes a while, much yeah. less, you know, it three will. or four, it, whatever and, we can do. And a lot of that is has to do with uh, the contracting and getting with the, the right people to put up that parking. Great. Any other questions? The employees that you have listed, um, are they counted in other departments also, or is that specifically the Parks Department? That's specifically the Parks Department. We do have other um, <coughs> positions open within the Public Works. Uh, I think we counted uh, 21 positions open within Public Works. Mowing schedule, has that, will that be increased with the additional staff? Um, I, could, I can legitimately say every piece of equipment is moving with the mowing. <laughs> Um, we, you know, God has blessed us with a lot of brain. Um, I do um, advise people, I appreciate their patience, that we get lots of calls on their uh, mowing. I knew that that was going to be a topic, and I, and I really do appreciate people's patience. I know it's aggravating. I know that grass is tall. But um, this week, we've real, one of the things that's been kind of uh, overseen is the ditches. And this week, we are going, we are in the ditches, we're, we're mowing. But at the same time, we're also kind of putting um, some of our employees in harm's way. I mean, we, we had some accidents just because the ground's too soft. But, you know, we're, we're trying to get out there. We're trying to do as much as we can. We're trying to be safe. But I just want everybody, we are, we're listening to you. We're not ignoring you. We're trying to get out there and mow as, as much as we can. So I hope our I, code department is just as patient with the people whose lawns get tall. I know. It's, <laughs> it is. We, we are. We're, we're trying. So um, I, I do appreciate your patience. And um, we should be, I'm crossing my fingers, we should be caught up in the ditches this week. You need to bring Rodney Tim in the combine. He can reach down there. <laughs> It's, it is really is amazing to watch those guys operate. Some of the, some of the places that they do operate, I'm like, I can't believe you moved that. So that I really do have to say that these guys do a lot of work. They're putting in the extra hours, and um, like some of the guys that you saw the night just came off the tractor and and just got their their awards. So um, I I admire their their hard work and their dedication. 
good problem to have with five inches of rain. Yeah. It, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining about Maybe the rain, but it, it definitely makes a harder task for me to get other stuff done. So it, It's nice to get a few calls on grass and weeds and yes. not potholes. Any more questions about the parks? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. Good job. Item 8.2, consider an economic development agreement with BH Tower, limited liability company, and Ohio, limited liability company. Brent Kissling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, Mr. Benson, city staff. It's a pleasure to be in front of you today. And uh, one of our purposes for doing public investment, whether it be parks, whether it be roads, uh, whether it be water and sewer lines, is to spur private investment along with it. You've invested millions in your downtown area, and uh, we're now starting to see that stream of public investment come to that area. Uh, so we should be very proud. Uh, Mr. Pert, who is here this evening uh, with us, he and his wife, uh, are a couple of those who have also seen that investment and have been willing to invest um, in our downtown as well. In December 2012, he uh, uh, purchased the Broadway Tower for $250,000 and has begun some of the renovations there at that facility. Um, just this last Friday night, he uh, opened up the uh, restaurant uh, uh, downstairs along with the lounge, and, and uh, I wasn't able to be there for that, but I heard that it was uh, very well received. And, and uh, one thing that he has done is, is set up a, a, a sample room of what could be in this boutique hotel in Broadway Tower, and uh, it was a solid stream all evening of folks getting to tour that. One of his reasons for doing it is to gauge our community support uh, for something like that in our downtown area, because with an asset like this, you've got a couple of directions you can go. You can use it as an office building, which it's been used for in the past, um, which generates very little sales tax revenue for our, uh, for our community, for our city, or uh, we can fulfill his dream of turning it into a boutique hotel. Uh, which would actually uh, uh, increase our sales tax revenues and, and tourism tax here in the area. Uh, but in order for that to happen, he needs our assistance. And uh, so what's before you this evening is an incentive package with three parts to it. One part is uh, uh, an exception on the sign ordinance under the economic development exception to allow him to put a sign at the top of the building that would be lighted uh, that could be seen from Highway 412. Even with your approval tonight, you'll still have uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, have input on that sign as it's uh, put up. This is, this is just the first stage of that. Second part of this incentive package is a performance-based cash incentive. Uh, I know there was a discussion downstairs. Sorry, I, I missed that, but it, it is a 1.5% uh, uh, incentive over five years. Uh, the reason why it's 1.5% is because uh, there's three and a half cents that come to the city of Enid in sales tax two cents that that already have homes. They, they go certain places. One and a half cents goes into the general fund. That's where the, the dollars came from. And then the third part of this is a waiving of fees for refuse containers and uh, city tipping fees out of the landfill during the, the uh, construction phase. Some of that has he's already incurred. Uh, we're not reimbursing him for that. We're just talking about this point full uh, waiving some of those fees for him. That, that amount is capped at $50,000. Um, we are, uh, uh, I hope everybody has have seen the proposal uh, as well as the contract that your city staff have put together. Uh, I'm pleased with the way it's put together because it has a lot of clawbacks with it. Um, in fact, uh, we had estimated that the uh, total dollar amount possible to be paid out every year would be about $47,000. In order for that $47,000 to be paid, the, uh, the city would have to receive over $400,000 in funding through city sales tax and tourism taxes. Um, so uh, uh, as I introduce Mr. Perta, I'd like to say thank you to him and to his investors for investing in our community and in our downtown at this point. I'll turn it over to Mr. Pert to uh, present his, uh, his project. Brent, what was the cap on the... $236,520. Thank you all for having me. Nice to see you again. Saw some of you at the tower the other night. Can you hear me all right? Um, <coughs> in any direction? Or we'll just in any direction. Let's see here. I'm going to go through this rather quickly because most of you uh, have already uh, seen it. And uh, I think that... Uh, you have the gist of it. This is a, 
a picture of the tower in 1930 with the, uh, well, I can see it here, with the uh, scaffolding on the outside, which we find very interesting. Um, we're involved in different types of uh, assets and mainly at this point um, in, the, uh, in the economic uh, uh, climate, we look for properties that are distressed. So we found the Broadway Tower after looking at many, many different properties. And uh, my wife in particular uh, was quite attracted to it. It's an Art Deco building, as you know, and we love it. Um, we're doing some great things over there, and we think it's got huge uh, potential. Um, we can't understand why it sat so uh, so vacant for so long, but I guess it's just a question of uh, who wants to <coughs> put some dollars into it and, uh, and resurrect this uh, amazing downtown uh, uh, building. So I suppose because we're a little bit from the outside looking in, we had a different perspective, and uh, we're very excited about it as a whole. So I'll continue on. This is a, a photograph uh, here. You can uh, note the car. We've got several of these. Um, you probably have seen them. Um, it was uh, up for auction, as you all know, and we did not actually attend the auction or bid at the auction, uh, even remotely. We waited till the whole thing was over, and uh, at that point, the price went up, and uh, we moved in from there and, and began discussions. And it did take us, uh, I think, roughly 10 months to actually close this deal. It was very, uh, very difficult for a variety of reasons, but we managed to get it closed uh, through uh, perseverance and uh, many hundreds of, uh, of emails. Uh, and during that time, of course, we uh, visited Enid and got to know the people here and, uh, and in general what the city is all about. So we have a good feeling about it. Going on from there, hmm, what have I done? Uh, these are some of the individuals that, uh, that we spoke to that were creating alliances with uh, to help run the hotel when that time comes. And we actually had all of these folks here and present last time uh, we had our presentation. Um, of course, they're not here again this evening. They're from Tulsa, and, uh, Oklahoma City, and one of the fellas is, uh, is local to Enid. So these are all hotel uh, individuals with various levels of, of expertise. Um, the reason we, we feel this is going to be <coughs> and for Enid is because it's essentially a destination hotel. It's a reason for people to come to Enid. If you need a room, it's one thing, but of course, if there's a reason to go and stay in Enid uh, because it's an interesting and exciting place to stay uh, at, uh, all the better. So I will now uh, play the promotional uh, video. I think you've got that queued up, or? Here we go. Thank you. Is that me? A question the very people that, that he shot, and he offered to plead guilty both to the prosecutors and the judge. Movie <laughs> <laughs> of the week. Says that we have of bringing people to town. Conveniently located within walking distance to shopping, dining, and entertainment. Having kind of a themed atmosphere, almost like the boutique feel, I think will make that a little diverse, and so we can target specific people and maybe even the artists that come to the to the uh, to the event center over into that space. The Broadway Tower Hotel will help make downtown Enid a destination where you can not only shop, dine, and be entertained, but you can also stay. I'm excited for its uniqueness because I feel it'll be a place that people who live in Enid will want to stay there. A thorough renovation and restoration has brought this landmark building up to date. This is an important project for the community of Enid because our focus has been on the core of Enid, which is our downtown. And I'm so thankful for the uh, investors who have come in and, and uh, uh, done this renovation to Broadway Tower. And it shows how a public investment, such as the Renaissance Project downtown, can spur private investment as well. It shows that people from outside of Enid are starting to see the growth that is happening here and are willing to make an investment in our community. Offering over 70 comparably priced themed rooms, boutique shops, specialty dining, and office spaces. They began construction on this fantastic building in 1929. It's on the historic registry. Every single person in this city knows this structure. It's the tallest building in Enid. It's the landmark, it's the princess. So we intend to do a great job in turning it around into something that everybody can enjoy and benefit from in the long run. Not only are we preserving history, 
we're also enhancing the future for the residents of Enid. This is very simply a validation of the investment we've made in, in downtown Enid as not only a destination, but a, a resource for our community. It's living proof that our investments have borne the fruit that we desired. The Broadway Tower Hotel in downtown Enid, Oklahoma. It's not just a hotel, it's an experience. Come stay with us. Uh, that was uh, created by uh, a local uh, company as well. They did a fantastic job. And I'd like to, uh, to thank all those that gave testimonials and uh, helped us uh, give us a leg up. Where are we going here? It's going to go back on. There we are. So again, um, you know, accommodations to uh, popular uh, attractions downtown. Having a hotel there makes a huge uh, difference. I do realize another hotel is coming in. At this point, I'd also just like to state that we're not in competition with the other hotel whatsoever. We feel that people will come to Enid <coughs> specifically to stay in the themed hotel, whether it's an event or not. But it's sort of, uh, you know, it adds a little bit more, uh, more flavor to the downtown core and, of course, additional rooms. We're ready to start uh, right away. In terms of how long it will take, that's going to be largely dependent on contractor availability, materials availability. Is, uh, is somewhat of a, a concern, but only a minor one. And uh, we have discussed this project with multiple contractors uh, over the past several months. Uh, in fact, even before we closed on the building to get a general idea. And everybody's sort of on hold. Nobody's given the go-ahead until we know exactly uh, where we do stand. So having these incentives come our way is just one more way of saying the city's behind us. Let's get going on this project. Uh, we hope to be finished by Christmas or at least have some rooms available. And we've had lengthy discussions with the fire department, as, as most of you know, with respect to how we would open up the hotel. And we're doing that in phases from the second floor to the ninth floor, inclusive of the rooms and suites. And we expect to have three, four, three floors open at a time while we finish the, the construction the rest of the way uh, up. So it makes most sense to get it open as quickly as possible for, for a multiple uh, reasons. Let's see here. What have we got there? Those are just photos. Uh, that's uh, the uh, model suite. Some of you here I know visited that. Uh, not all. I think that's a fairly good representation. Um, this uh, eatery downtown is now open, as you know, and there's a cafe right next door, which is uh, in the agreement. It talks about having it open on, the, uh, on both sides of the entrance. That task, in fact, has been complete and the uh, historic uh, elevator is, uh, hasn't been running for years, is actually operating at this point. Um, I mentioned before in our last meeting that we had to uh, scour the planet basically to get the appropriate plans to try to get this thing going because there's really nothing to, to go by. It's, it's interesting from the point of view that uh, uh, everybody seems to have an attraction to this elevator and it's actually in mint condition from, from seen it so that's actually operating now but it hasn't passed its uh, its state inspection at this point there are still some things that need to be tweaked so a lot of progress there we feel uh, that's an office space downstairs that's an image of our elevator fellow and uh, you know we had our it, it, it talks this is the old video it talks about our our grand opening I would like to say that the the turnout for our first Friday event our event in conjunction with first Friday was was uh, amazing according to the food count and what we gave away in, in beverages, um, we think about 1,500 people came through, so the response was tremendous. In fact, the lobby was full. The elevator that went up to the model suite on the fourth floor had uh, incredible reviews. In fact, the people had to take the stairs down because there was so much going on. So for those of you that were there, I'm sure you can attest to that. Things went on. We had four, dis four different uh, uh, local uh, music acts uh, in involved that night. So everybody had a really great time. It was a, a super opportunity for us to expose the model suite. And we've had nothing but incredibly positive reviews. So we get the distinct feeling that people like what we're doing there and, and again we're we're excited and we did uh, we did open the lounge and the cafe earlier than we thought just to you know demonstrate uh, to those of you here that <clears throat> that make decisions that we are serious about what we're doing and uh, we do produce results and we make it happen this is a picture of the uh, 
put this in at the 11th hour. This is a picture of the lineup at the at the restaurant on the uh, on the first Friday, and uh, that is the crowd that has gathered out front. And as you can see in the background, mm -hmm. the lights are on the left and the right. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd all vote favorably, favorably for, our, for our request. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Any questions? Thank you. I move we approve the agreement. A motion by Ben. Second. Second by Ron. For the questions or comments. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 1. Item 8.3. Consider the property, I'm sorry, consider the purchase of property located at 348 East Cornell, Enid, Oklahoma, and the amount of $241,500. This item and would be to purchase property at 348 East Cornell. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about it. This property is uh, a, in exchange with the property in the Renaissance area. <clears throat> it's a, a, a perfect match for both the seller and the intended new inhabitant. It retains a very vibrant business in our community, and it's within the budget that we estimated for this exchange. Is that uh, inclusive of a building that you'll be able to, to utilize? It's a, it's a walk-in uh, turnkey Ready operation. To go. Okay. Is, is this the total purchase price for the building that we're acquiring? Or yes. Is there going to be other? No. This is the total cost, and, and it has, uh, even includes $2,500 closing. Now, the, for, the, for the cost of this building, we, we have promised moving expenses for the business owner, just as we have with the other uh, partners in the downtown area. And the city demolishes the building they're in? Yes. They're leaving? Correct. Make a motion to approve the purchase. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ben. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 8.4, <clears throat> consider a resolution increasing the 2013-2014 budget for the Fire Fund Fire Department in the amount of $125,787.80. And you're still up. Yes, this is an item to um, appropriate additional dollars for the fire department for the relocation of fire station number four on to South Hoover. Um, the contract is 60000 for or for the property and 60787 amount for sanitary sewer improvements and $5,000 added in for closing cost. That's what makes up the total of 125 Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mike, a second by Tammy. Questions, Aaron, what was the $5,000 at the end? Closing costs. Okay, okay, thank you. Any further comments, questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 8.5. Consider the purchase of property located in the 800 block of South Hoover or re relocation of firehouse number four located at 2205 West Owen K. Garriott. Go. Mayor, City Mr. Benson, uh, this agenda item is for your consideration on purchasing the land, the first step in the construction of our new fire station on South Hoover. I'd appreciate your support. Any questions? Just like to say thank you for finding this alternative solution to Lions Park. Uh, Paula left. I'm shocked that Paula Nightingale didn't hang around. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you. Joe, would you explain? I've had a lot of questions uh, from within and without the commission about why only a half acre. You have a really good answer if you could share it with me. I think. <laughs> But not only if it's really good. If it's not, don't. No, I know it has a good answer, and, and a lot of people ask that question. It'd be a good time for them to tell us why. No pressure. Upkeep is one. Just maintenance of a. We need concrete. We need a drive-through station. But I don't need a lot of extra grass to mow. Uh, also, the cost prohibitive for more than I needed. I could build the, basically the station I need on that uh, footprint. So, 
got just about what I needed to get the job done. And it retains the excess for future development of that property around it. Yes, sir. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's amazing how a little property a firehouse, a fire station requires, if you go by and look at it personally. Not, not very big. I, I move we approve the purchase. So, motion by Tammy. Second. Second by Mike. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Item 8.6, consider addendum 3A to the Master Services Agreement with AT&T and the Enid Garfield County Major County 911 System for Major County Database Services. Hello, I'm, I'm Lieutenant Singleton. Um, submitting this uh, addendum to the current um, AT&T contract that we uh, currently exist between uh, Enid Garfield and Major County 911 and AT&T. This addendum will be a first step in the step to um, uh, complete Major County's 911 system and be able to turn them on. This, this creates the 911 database for all the subscribers in Major County. Appreciate your consideration. Move to approve. Motion second. By, motion by Ben and a second by Ron. Further questions or discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Is that six one? <coughs> six. Six zero. <coughs> okay. Still count. Item eight point seven. Did we get ahead of you? Consider an ordinance amending the Enid Municipal Code 2003, amending Title II, entitled Finance and Taxation, Chapter 6, entitled Fee Schedule, Article 3, entitled City Services, Section 2-6C-7, entitled Park Shelter, to amend the section title to Park and Facilities Fees, and to amend and add regulations of Park and Facilities Fees, providing for repealer, savings clause, severability, and codification. Whitney. This ordinance was discussed at the July 16th uh, study session with maintenance impro and improvements gearing up in all of these, uh, all these parks. And with the growing department, a lot of these facilities have not currently been listed in the ordinance. Right now, all we have is Meadow Lake and Crossland, so it's been very outdated. Um, it does not include Champlain Pool, Government Springs, Dillingham Gardens, and as soon as renovations are complete on Wilson School, that will also be um, something that the public can rent out. <coughs> All fees and services must be approved by the city manager. It's set up exactly like the water meter ordinance was. Um, everything will be posted in the city hall and as well as on our website. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, I, I do have one question. Uh, th this doesn't reflect any fees at all. I'm assuming there will be fees. Right. Uh, do we know what the fees are going to be and why would those fees not be approved by us? <clears throat> it would change it to policy like we did with the water meter. It, everything must go through the city manager. It allows it to stay more up to date and more current as things come online and offline for maintenance, for just completion like a Wilson Gym once the renovations are complete. It's just one way to keep the public more informed and more up to date talking about things like the pavilion at Government Springs and those kind of things so if they're not on here how I mean they're clearly being people are being charged for those already so. policy it just changes everything to policy well I, I can't speak for everyone up here but but I would like to have some say as to what what these are I I, I think we need to I, I'm concerned that we're not going to, uh, you know, make these uh, fees to where it would be difficult for people to rent and use these facilities. I don't think that would ever be our desire or the city manager's desire. As we make any changes, we can bring those changes to you as they happen. That's easily done as but, things but We're change. actually talking about establishing an initial fee schedule, aren't we? Right. Well, there's already a fee schedule. Yeah. Well, except we just wiped it out with this... Uh, Thing here, that if you look at this ordinance, it takes every all the fee <coughs> languages taken out of the ordinance. Correct, and it states that they must be uh, fully uh, aware. The public must be fully made aware of them. The so they, statute dictates that they have to be posted. Yes, um, in plain sight, or anywhere that you have to pay the fee. So I mean, 
We can't just change them on a whim. Okay, but I'm not. But he wants to know. I just want to know what the fees are going to be. Who sets that? Who decides that? The city manager. Do you think you'll share that with us? Yes. Yes, we can bring everything to you. It just makes it so it's not, it doesn't have to go to an ordinance vote. You wait 30 days for well, no, the change happens. I understand happens. that. I, I don't see any it's reason just, either to, I, I'm just saying is, you know, I, 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 I feel like we should have some input on it. It is just an option to consider. Okay. It was discussed in the study session. There were no questions raised, so it was brought so to if, special events order. If everything hasn't been listed, I guess I'm just confused. If everything hasn't been listed in here, how have we been charging for it? On policy. Policy dictated by the city manager. The, the fee schedules have always been set and they're all posted. What, right, what this what prevents is, it, let's look at the other direction on this. <laughs> it's not that we're trying to hide uh, changes to you. It's to prevent having to bring a $5 fee change before city council and waste your time with it. You pay us to do those things. And uh, if, if we change policy, that's an issue that will come before you. Uh, the fee schedule is already established and we don't anticipate any changes. If they change, it empowers us to be nimble enough to respond to the conditions. It doesn't keep the city council from being involved. I think that's the city manager's job. That's why we hire him to do the job. I would just it like to see a copy operation. of the fee schedule. If there is a fee schedule, I just like to see it. We'll do it. We'll get that for you. Okay. Well, they have it at the court, at the city clerk's office. Once this goes into effect, everything will be posted and it will be on the website. And is, is this listing um, all the, the the facilities available for rent by name? Is that yes, right? everything will be listed by name. So their specific each, fee. Every time something comes, we add something. I mean, does that? Yes, we would we have not, to update it every single time something changed. Then, can we not use a, a blanket uh, uh, form? You know, name for a city uh, facility available for rent or something like that. Currently, the way it is set up, it's based on sizes. So each park location has different sizes. So one's 20, one's 25, based on the different parks. So at this time, unless we change the fees for the current uh, pavilions and shelters, then no, there's not a blanket set amount. It's based each on size is a, yeah. and, and uh, functionality, uh, location, a variety of those Whether things. it has electricity, whether it has a grill, whether it has lights, mm -hmm. what kind of amenities it has, how location the bathroom, there are various things that have been taken into account with each of those rental facilities. And not all of them are the same. Many of them are not the same. <laughs> make a motion to uh, approve the ordinance. Motion by Mike. Do we have a second? I'll second. Rodney. Further discussion. Please cast your vote. Motion carries seven zero. <laughs> <coughs> Item eight point eight. Consider an ordinance creating Title I, Chapter 15 of the Enid Municipal Code 2003 to create a streamlined and detailed procedure for organizing special events. Lenny, before you start, let me offer a special uh, appreciation to Commissioner Wilson. She's been tireless in her involvement and suggestion and improvement of this. I, I mean that sincerely, that, it, that that sort of involvement is is very welcome to the to staff. <coughs> Tireless equals annoying, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, we I, come to you for suggestions. We like that. Oh, I, and I give them willingly. <laughs> so. You know, uh, getting over your shyness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whitney. Go ahead. Um, this is a brand new ordinance, and it is not a revision to the current uh, city code. It is a brand new title. The purpose of this ordinance is to streamline the responsibilities of the personal organization asking for the permit as well as the responsibilities of city staff. So everybody knows what everybody is supposed to be doing. Right now there's a lot of miscommunication. There's no one set person that the public can come to. This sets up that person, that streamline, where it goes throughout the city, who that person has to go to, what they have to submit. <coughs> want to make it as easy as possible even though this could never really be easy. Um, specific de definitions were included to give baseline definitions of what each item was specifically addressing. Applications are due 60 days before the event, and the event organizer must use the application that's been set forth. 
Um, there is a provision that allows for this rule, the 60-day rule, to be uh, reconsidered by the city manager depending on what they needed for that event, how much time we need to set up, whether it's to get police officers there, barricades. If there, are, if there's a smaller event, we can waive that 60 days. Obviously, it takes 30 days for this to come into effect. We need to uh, let the public know that this is happening. So there will be a grace period where that 60 day does not start in 30 days. So unless you had it in 30 days prior. Good, because I have an event yeah. in 30 days. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, there, of course, will be a grace period before we work did. with the public. <laughs> Like this. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, the street closure closure request will be handed by the Parks and Event Parks and Recreation Event Coordinator to ensure that residences or business where parking access is being fully restricted are aware of the event and agree to the event. Uh, what is due within the application is a map of the area, area, any advertisement, material, liability, insurance, map of street closures, and all other applicable permits, whether they be burning, fireworks, temporary signs, whatever they may be. They are attached to the application, and within the application, it's a yes or no questionnaire, basically. So if you answer yes to this question, then it directs you to the next step. Then you must fill out this. So it tried to make it as seamless as possible so you know what your next step is supposed to be. Um, police and fire have outlined issues that they must address. The police department has the ability to include a security plan if they feel the event needs it. Uh, the fire department uh, reviews the fire lanes and access, burn permits, firework display, and emergency medical personnel if needed. Each department um, that is responsible for something within a special event must approve and write off on it. This includes the police department, fire department, city clerk's office, engineering department, code department, public works, streets and traffic, and public works, park and recreation department. Again, the park and recreation department spearheads this and makes sure that it goes through all the proper channels. Each department must sign off on it. If they do not, they have to give written reasons as to why they're not signing off on it, and the applicant must be given enough time to make those changes or come to a compromise with that specific department. If a compromise cannot be reached, then the city manager gets involved. They have 10 days to appeal to the city manager, and the city manager has 10 days to review and make final decision. If they cannot come to an agreement, then the permit is completely denied. If they can, then it moves on. If the application then adheres to all of the guidelines and the ordinance, it, the permit is issued once all fees are paid. Uh, some of the issues that are addressed within the ordinance are event access requirements. Pedestrians must be given access to it. They must have an easy exit, entrance and exit that is fully signed. Um, and people that live and work in the area, they cannot be restricted to their place of business or uh, their home. They must be given free reign to go there without having to pay a fee, as well as delivery personnel. If somebody is trying to make a delivery in that area, they cannot be refused access. Safety requirements include uh, proving that you have an ABLE license or a Garfield County liquor license. If there will be liquor or beer served, the city manager is only allowed to permit low point beer on city property by ordinance, sorry, 55H2. And all caterers must have their license up to date by ordinance 3-1-1 and 3-2-5. Lighting must be adequate to protect the safety of all visitors. And of course, again, safety is our primary concern. Food handlers permits must be given to anybody that is serving food or if there is food being served. Trash receptacles must be plentiful and available to everyone and all trash and debris must be picked up within 24 hours. Port uh, sorry, portable toilets are also required and cannot be within 25 feet of any entrance. That is just a Department of Health gu guideline. Any person selling food or any goods must have a vendor permit. The, um, you will notice that there was a substantial change from study session to now. Basically, that vendor permit followed the lines of the solicitor's permit that Shandy presented last time. We made it a little less strict for a vendor permit because they're not going door to door. They're staying in one location. So there's a little less needed for the vendor permit, but it follows the same lines. So we waited until that solicitor's um, ordinance was presented to you, excuse me, before putting that in this ordinance. That's why they needed to go hand in hand. 
We ask for name, address, business name and business address, employment information, description of items and goods for sale, date of application, whether they have ever had a permit revoked or ever been convicted of a felony, verification of payment of sales tax and county clerk documents that establishes the business has complied with state law. We also reserve the right to ask for any additional documents in case we have any questions. If something comes up and with police, they can request more. Um, we have also included exemptions for economic development purposes and community involvement. For economic development, priority is given to those that can show historic data of bringing people to the community. If they can show through hotel rates that they brought X amount of people in or through food services or just having the event in the past. Is there a <coughs> minimum set there? It will be based on city manager. He will make that determination. We have no set guidelines in here so that it can be depending on what type of event it is. There could be one that it's only bringing X amount of people, but there are high economic benefits for bringing those X amount of people in. So that will be up to the city manager's discretion. Um, and and how, do you, how do you describe community involvement? Community involvement is described as um, events that are free to the community. They do not require a participation fee or entrance fee. And anyone in the community is able to attend or participate if they wanted to. It also um, cannot disrupt traffic or the minimal disru disruption to traffic. Um, that that cover those are the four prongs for community involvement. Again, so the city manager has that discretion to waive those fees, and he is the only one that has that ability. Um, offense and penalty: if they violate anything within this ordinance, they have all permits revoked for one year before they can apply again. And do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, one, one question, if I may. It, did you say they have filed this request 60 days prior to the event? Correct. What, what if they don't have that much time before they want to do the event? Is there any waiver on that? Yes, the city manager has the ability to waive that, depending on what type of event it is, how short of notice we have and what personnel we need to um, require at that event. Some events require police personnel and if they don't have enough time to have staffing there, then we can't waive that date requirement. If it's a smaller event, just like in a parking lot that it's 30 days before, 15 days before, he can waive that if nothing is really needed. Have we had any kind of a ordinance like this in the past? No, we have not. This, this is a is brand, new brand new ordinance. And we think we need this. There has been uh, much discussion over the past two years through the creation of this ordinance. A lot of the event organizers have been unhappy. A lot of city staff has been unhappy with just how it goes. There isn't a lot of coordination between both groups. Because it's entirely too difficult. Yes. And this is not really making it easier. Um, I think the economic development portion is completely arbitrary and kind of crazy. And I think that the, the offense and penalty part, if someone blatantly does something wrong and it's a horrible offense, I could see that. But if somebody messes up, I think taking away their permit for a year is ridiculous. Well, there's plenty of latitude in there for interpretation on that. That's well, that's the problem. It should, I mean, whose interpretation is that going to be? Well, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. If if, if it's a local organization that has a history of, of good cooperation and, and good stewardship of the assets and, and, and doesn't impose <laughs> upon and cause you extra expense as a council, then, then they'll have standing. But if, uh, if there's a fly by an organization that wants to come in, make a lot of money and sail back out, and that happens, and we have a mechanism to hold them accountable. And, and to simply say, come one, come all, doesn't mean that we can't treat them in that manner, but it does give us the opportunity to fence those that deserve it. And then is the special event permit that, because right now the way it is, is you go to the police department and get that and then you turn it into the police department. Is that changing then? Yes, it will. We're going to have it available online so anybody can just get online and get it. Once it's complete, it is then submitted to the city clerk's office and then our parks and recreation event coordinator picks it up from there until they have a centralized parks and rec location, we're gonna do it that way. So it will go through the city clerk's office where everybody has access to it instead of at the service center where you have to have a badge to get in. So for the time being, everything will come in and out of the city clerk's office. That is the only place the person will have to go. It's where they will drop off their application and that's where, where they will pick up their permits and pay their fees. Assuming we pass this, I'd like to see just over the next six months or, or so, uh, inquiries made among the people who 
who use this mechanism. Survey. How's it work? Uh, what was awful? What worked great? What can we do differently? And then maybe we revisit it again in six months or a year. I mean, yeah. I, I think this is a great procedure, and, and it does seem a little overly complicated and does give him an awful lot of, um, you know, ability to Power. say yes, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of it um, is operational. Do uh, and, no, and I, and I understand that's you know the structure and and, and whatever. But is, it, all it, I'm saying is I'd like to see this. I'd like to know how it actually works. And the plan with I can Kelly, tell you in about sixty days. <laughs> yes. Well, more than one opinion. I have three table. events coming up in the <laughs> I know, next two months. I know. More than the, one, opi one. More than one opinion. The construction of vocal. the ordinance allows for latitude within the application that we can change that as we see if it's not working, we sure. can make any revisions because a lot of that is policy. So we can make that change without changing the ordinance. If we see a need in the ordinance change, that is easily brought back like any other ordinance. Well, with, with that in mind, I'd move to approve. Motion by the end. Do we have a second? Did you second it? No, I did not. I'll, I'll second, second it. Question. I have a question. Who seconded it? Over here. David? Yep. So a question. Motion, we the, have a second. Are there any questions or comments? Who's the PNR event coordinator currently? Kyle Blackburn. Who's the Parks and Rec supervisor? It's uh, Melvin Key. You have you, when you mentioned like coming to one person, you mean one person or one city clerk's office? If they have questions, all questions will be directed to Kyle Black. Instead of sending a person from one department to another, they have that one contact what, that they call. That's what one as far as dropping off and picking up, everything goes for this through the city clerk. This is not a new position; it's someone that's already on staff. And, and it's right. a one stop. It's a one stop. I like that part. I just want to see if it was a new person or if it's actually when you say one person, that's at the certain office. Or no, it's just being uh, added to part of the duties as the park and recreation. I guess that function is invisible to the user, the public. That, that's an internal labor. So I will say Kyle's been going to park the last couple park board meetings, and, and I worked with him a little bit with this year Shakespeare in the Park, and he's been uh, he's been really helpful. And did you want your motion to include reviewing it again in six months? Uh, yeah. I would, I would revise like my add. motion. I'd like to see this reviewed and revisited in six months. Do you still second that, David? Yes. Further comments or questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 1. <clears throat> Item 8.9 Consider a resolution declaring the necessity for acquiring property for the Renaissance project and authorize instruct and direct the city attorney to commence condemnation proceedings if said property cannot be purchased and damages settled by agreement with the landowners. Shandy? Mayor, commissioners, Mr. Benson, this agenda item deals only with the property located at 416 South Grand Avenue. Um, that particular property does lie within the section that has been set aside for use with the Renaissance project. Um, where we are at in this point with eminent domain in trying to acquire this property, the property has been appraised and we have made an offer, which several offers actually, um, which by law cannot be any lower than the fair market value that was set during the appraisal. Um, so as it said in the agenda item, <coughs> we've, made, we've made fair, um, offers, we've made generous offers, and we're still unable, unfortunately, to come to an agreement with the current owners, which is a trust. So what we're asking is that we are allowed to move forward with the condemnation proceedings and hopefully be able to obtain this property fairly quickly. Any questions? How many properties are still outstanding? I believe that there are five. That's right. We have, we have tentative contracts on one of those, the Powell property. Uh, the, uh, Which one, Eric? The Powell property. Which we voted on. Okay. Oh, I'm Powell. sorry. Uh, no, the Powell oh, property the Powell. is the, the one behind, uh, and it, it, it is the, it looks like a garage underground. It's on the backside of the Family Dollar Store. 
and the Family Dollar Store is one, but we have an equitable arrangement with, with those folks. And as I think you've been briefed by our, our council who's acquiring these properties, that that's just a simple matter of uh, meeting the price, and there's a reason why we're saving it for the last uh, execution. As far as uh, opposed to, properties, uh, execution, sorry, execution of the contract, <laughs> but there, as far as actively opposing contracts, there are two, this one and the Walters property. Can we not log roll that other one into this so we don't have to do this again? Well, uh, council uh, suggests that perhaps this might prime the pump so that we don't have to do it again. And I, I don't know, Shannon, you can, I don't think we can roll properties together. I think you have to have individual actions. That's correct. Um, we would have to file, first of all, we have to show that we, in good faith on each property, <coughs> Did the steps for eminent domain and that we are at the point where we can start condemnation proceedings so we couldn't roll them in for that reason the second thing is we would have to file separate actions anyway with district court and ask for separate commissioners to be appointed to look at this case so it, the feasibility of it's just not there they have to be separate we have we have the we retain the opportunity to go to uh, further negotiations even mediation on this property they're now finally represented by someone locally who we can actually speak to. And we are doing this upon advice and representation of our very capable outside counsel. Correct. And the concern with this particular property, um, I know some of the concern is it, they want their building replaced, correct? Is this the one that we're Well, that, they've one? never posed that question. It's always been a dollar figure. I, I, I read that story in the paper. Well, that's the first indication that's the I've concern. seen. But is this not an empty building? That's not an it active business? It's been empty business? for three years. So it's not an active business? It's not. It's an empty building. And so all? essentially, some people would wish that we spend their taxpayer money on, an, on replacing an empty building that is not an active business versus well, giving them fair market they value. They don't necessarily have all the... In accurate information. Shocking. Well, I, I think that it's a, it's, just, it's a simple case of they want to get as much money from their property as, as they can, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. We simply can't come to an agreement on what that number is. And we have offered them, obviously, a fair price. We, 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 yes, many times over the, the appraised price. I'll make a motion that we approve this resolution. I will second that. Motion by Mike, a second by, 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 sorry, by Ron, second by Mike. I have a question. Are there a required number of appraisals, of appraisals to be made on the property before you can go to condemnation? There is in a sense that both parties have to agree that the appraiser's value is fair. So if there is an objection to the amount of, let's say, an appraiser that, that we have chosen, they always have the opportunity to try and rebut that amount. Um, I'm not sure that that has even taken place in this case. I think we're just sitting on not being able to agree to a price. And so. it get, if in the throes of condemnation, there are provisions to require an additional and agreed upon neutral appraisal. Yes. And But that appraisal is not then binding to both parties. The it's judge it. is the one that makes the final decision. Correct. Out. That's fair. Yes. If we, were, if we do this, when do you begin? Immediately <coughs> filing the action. Because as I've said, we've already complied with all of the steps um, through Oklahoma state statutes for eminent domain to get to this point. And you'll recall that this is the second such action we've taken. We were able to successfully close the other property in question uh, amicably. And our hopes are that this one would follow suit. We're, we're committed to being fair. And, and, the, and, the, next, and the next one. Motion and a second. We have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item 8.10 Consider an ordinance amending Title III, Chapter 11, Sections 3 11 1 through 3 11 14 of the Enid Municipal Code, 2003. <coughs> Regarding solicitation, Shandy? Yes, Mayor and Commissioners, you first saw this uh, ordinance at the July 16th study session. 
where there was much discussion on um, what we currently have versus what we're trying to pass through this amendment. Basically what we are doing is rewriting the City of Enid's code on solicitors in its entirety. We are trying <coughs> to allow for safety of our citizens by doing this and we are trying to give the, um, the police officers more ability to regulate as well as being able to regulate through our municipal court process. I move we approve this ordinance. Do, do what? I move we approve this ordinance. Motion by Tammy, second by Mike. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 1. <clears throat> Item 8.11. Consider a resolution supporting Main Street Enid's participation in the 2013-2014 Oklahoma Main Street program. Shanty. I'll make a motion that we approve this item. Second. second. Motion by Ron, a second by Ben. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion <coughs> carries 7-0. Item 8.12. Consider an ordinance amending Title II, Chapter 6, Article E, Section 2-6E-5, and Title VIII, Chapter 2, Section 8-2-15 of the Enid Municipal Code 2003 regarding the City of Enid water rates and emergency conservation phase. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We want to bring this to you tonight. We brought this to you three weeks ago at the study session, and uh, we want to simplify the way that we do water conservation and the uh, the processes that we go through during that. Uh, right now, we're started the phase one, which is odd even sprinkling. Um, we started that on July the 16th. We're not the only ones that do that. It's been successful so far. We've obviously had a, a good weather events that have given us a lot of rain, so. This has been a fantastic thing. We've got three phases in our current ordinance. The first phase is the odd even sprinkling system that we're doing right now. Phase two, we could go into that and require people uh, that they can't do any sprinkling, that it would be hand, water, hand watering only. And then during phase three, which is what we're gonna talk about, would be in addition to that, having emergency rates that would commence. Uh, they're, they're somewhat complicated now. We move to simplify that. Uh, right now, you can see that you know, it would start out at a base rate and then go below the coordinates rate. And then for irrigation meters, um, it starts out below the ordinance rate and then at, at starting at 3,000 gallons, it bumps up to $10.55. That's our current residential policy. Our current um, uh, commercial policy right now would be, uh, would be have, having a, a different rate if they're over their monthly average. And for irrigation meters, they still get 2,000 gallons, 2,900 gallons at a below ordinance rate and then starting at 3,000 go up to $10.55. This is somewhat complicated, so our proposed changes are to keep the rates exactly what they are during the rest of the year. Um, if the emergency rates were passed and gone into phase three, then things would stay the same unless you use more than 10,000 gallons. So if you're a residential user, everything would stay the same. If you're starting at 11,000 gallons, the rate would then go up to $10.55 per thousand gallons. It would be the exact same thing on your irrigation meter. You would still be allowed to have 10,000 gallons at the normal ordinance rate, and then starting at 11,000 gallons, it would then jump up to $10.55. On the commercial, proposed changes, their irrigation meters would stay uh, at 268. They would, just like residential users starting at 7,000, pay 439 per thousand, and their rate would jump up to 1055 starting at 34,000 gallons. That's about the average that commercial users have, and they have much larger lots that they need to take care of, so that's why there's a, a difference there. And then we would also remove any additional fee over the average. Um, the, the, the way that people do business, they don't change how they, their, their manufacturing processes through the year, they stay relatively the same. So we, we believe we can make the proposed impact just on irrigation meters for commercial users. So that is the proposed changes. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, please ask them now. Scott, the intent of this is to encourage people to conserve, not to, to, to penalize, is that, is that correct? Absolutely. And if they use lower than the normal amount, it goes 
down, correct? Then go, is it still, is it like we did before where the rate, their, reg, their regular rate is what, 238 or something, and then it actually goes down to a dollar something? What we did, that made it a lot more complicated so and, and hard to understand. So this year we said, you know, if you, if you use less, if you use up to 10,000 gallons, so it just it'll stays. be just the same as it was before. Okay. You would only pay the higher rate starting out 1,000 gallons. Joe. This only goes into effect during phase three of yes, sir. the uh, Conservation Act, okay. Which we're only in phase one right now, and I believe we're having uh, good enough weather events that hopefully we can stay out of any further phases and less, uh, less of weather. <laughs> Oklahoma, who knows? That's, there you go. We have a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by Rodney. Further discussion? I have one additional question, Mr. Mayor. David? Um, it's not the intent of this uh, at all, but it raises the issue of this definition in paragraph B, numbers one and two, with regards to section 8-1-14 of the city code dealing with multiple charging units within the water charging structure. I'm gonna ask the council that we uh, consider that issue at an upcoming study session. And initially, I, it is my opinion that we uh, an extreme amount of latitude has been granted in the way we charge commercial entities uh, within the city of Enid for their water, and that needs to be addressed. So I'm going to ask this council to take that issue on at, an, at another meeting. That's, a, that's an excellent uh, time to have a very uh, in-depth discussion, Commissioner. We have, you could interpret our policy as being discriminatory. When in fact it's it you know it, it was rooted in a reason, but it's been on the books for some time. I think it, it warrants an examination. Does that need to be part of the motion? No, I'm just. I don't, I'll I don't think it has anything to do with the intent of this motion. We'll bring back back for commission action in uh, the in two weeks hence. Okay. Fair enough, David. A motion and a second. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item 8.13 Consider a resolution authorizing the purchases and repairs for sanitary sewer system project number E 1401 and declaring an emergency. Chris? Thank you, sir. As you know, um, last week we, have, we were uh, notified that we had a sewer break. We went and looked at it out on Boggy Creek, just east of the 10th Street. We had a 36 inch line. Are those trucks coming up? We had a 36 inch line that had been uh, washed out due to the recent rains. Uh, when we got our notification, we uh, had our folks take care of the pump around for an immediate solution, which basically provides us the capability to keep any discharge from going into the Boggy Creek and we were able to pump that out onto our property where the old landfill is. We then implemented a design to do a temporary workaround, which allows us to build a uh, temporary line here between this manhole and just downstream of the break to bypass the break, and that'll give us the time it takes to design and, com and competitively award the permanent fix. The permanent fix will take that line out of the uh, Boggy Creek Bank, and uh, we shouldn't have to visit this one again. Will we approve? Motion by Ben. Second. Second by Tammy. Further discussion or questions? <coughs> Please cast your vote. Do we need to have a separate emergency or anything? And a second vote for the emergency. Can we do that all together? Separate. It's a separate vote. It's a separate motion. After we vote? Yes. Motion carries 7-0. Now the emergency. Move for an emergency. Second. Motion by Ben. Second by Tammy. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. <clears throat> item 9, consent items. Move we approve consent items. A second. Motion by Ben. Second by Tammy. Please cast your vote. Oh. Say, I'm, I'm glad to Wait see the uh, the police vehicles being purchased locally. I was uh, talking about to say that, that was a uh, something that didn't happen yeah. here. 
And we're going to get free rides from the SWAT vehicle, right? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> tank. You only need to book six. <laughs> Motion carries 7-0. Can I ask uh, briefly if you could update us on the Willow, Ri Willow Road wide project? How many properties are we still away from? Since that was one of the consent items was an additional acquisition, how close are we? How many properties are left on that, Chris? One moment, sir. Sorry, it's not on the agenda. Is it appropriate for me to ask that at this point? Probably not, but it's a good question. Right here is the one that we have just acquired the easement on and the one that was in the consent item. As you can see from the count, we have four other properties that are we have negotiated on. We just haven't closed. Uh, various different reasons dealing with the, the lawyers and, and getting the final paper okay. taken care of. And we've got six that we're still negotiating with. We may, we're not real close, but we know the, kind of where we're at on it. Your best guess on possible condemnation. It's a different categorization than what we discussed earlier because there's state statutes about right-of-way expansions and condemnation as far as personal property and, and real estate goes. But how many do you think that are no kidding intransigible? That's probably not even a word, but I like it. <laughs> do you have all that power you can make up words? Yeah, I got, that's right. You gave me the power to make up words. <laughs> I actually believe that we could probably come to terms with the majority of them, and I really, I really suspect that when we got right down to it, we could probably close them all without condemnation. There's only one that comes to mind that has been even the least bit emotional. I mean, it's been a very cooperative. It has been a very effort. cooperative. I, mean, I, I commend the citizens on the long well. They're really great citizens. They they want the what's. They, they're hard bargainers, but and, and they want a fair and they want a fair price for what we're wanting to do, and they want to make sure that we take care of their property and, and we'll compensate them and take care of their concerns. So sure they also see the need and necessity of of, uh, of that project. Well, especially when we explain, uh, you know, the biggest issue there we're taking down a bunch of trees. Let's face it, we're moving utilities and. I share their dismay at the, the impact on those trees along that street. We're going to replant them. We're not going to plant saplings. We're going to put, you know, we're going to put some expensive replants in there. And uh, when it's all said and done, they'll have a, a walking trail through the entire uh, a mile section there, and it'll be a great improvement. And, and some of the things that we've we've offered to do to make things a little more palatable to them is, we'll take out a tree that's close, but maybe not exactly on our line. But we'll go ahead and take it down because it gets it out of our way, gets it out of their way, and that is part of the negotiation. Help me with where that map is. That's that is between uh, Cleveland and Oakwood along Willow. That's Willow Road. Uh, this is the golf course right here, and this is the east of the railroad tracks going to Cleveland. There's a top of Willow. The there. Yeah. Two pictures there. Because they below P19 is there's a lot more golf course to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, so you got that a, wasn't a problem. Is that a split map? Yes. Yes, that is a split, split map, sir. Say that up front so don't <laughs> you don't <laughs> confuse me. Okay. Okay. I, I know what maps look like, and that doesn't look well, like he's, he's just being intangible. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, thank you. The property that is. It's either P8 or P16. One of those two has just been issued a new building permit and they are building out closer to the road. Does that impact that access at all? It would probably be P8 or I think it's P8. Seven. It's P8, on that side of the street. I take a look at the building permit and see what going to be pretty close to the street. It's going to cost us a lot more if they finish that. Did that answer your question okay? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the update. Would you mind emailing me those slides of that, if you don't mind? Maybe all the commission would like to have it. In the consent items, we approved the, or we accepted the last couple phases of the trails. When are we going to talk about the new phases of the trails? Uh, we, we hope to do that in two weeks, but there there's some preparation at we have to do, we're going to be able to give you in 
Well, perhaps not in the granularity that you want it, but we're going to talk about it in two weeks. Okay. We need your input on how to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are at the point where, where we're starting to need a little bit of that. Yeah. We, have, we have some. Item 10. We will recess to convene as the Enid Municipal Authority. Item 11. The trustees of the Enid Municipal Authority are in the regular meeting and we are all present. Item 12, the Enid Municipal Authority regular medium, meeting. Item 12.1, consider a resolution increasing the 2013-2014 fiscal financial plan for the Enid Municipal Authority in the amount of $241,500. Move we approve. Second. Motion by Ben, a second by Mike. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 12.2, <clears throat> award a blanket purchase order, purchase of emulsion polymer, polymer is it? for the period from July 1, 2013 to June 30, 2014. Rob? I'll make a motion that we approve this uh, purchase. Second. Motion by Rob, second by Ben. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. You, Good presentation. <laughs> Motion carries 7-0. Item 12.3, approval of claims in the amount of $274,534.02. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Mike. Second. S second by Rodney. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. We will now adjourn to convene as the Enid Economic Development Authority. All of the trustees of the Enid Economic, it's a tough word. You just say. <laughs> All of the trustees of the Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting are present. Item 15, we are now in the Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting. Item 15.1. Approve and execute an economic development agreement with BH Tower LLC and Ohio Limited Liability Company. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ben, a second by Ron. Any further discussion? I'm sorry to bring this up at this point. I should have brought it up earlier, but in reviewing that contract, I have a couple of concerns, and I believe it's, I can't find it right off the top, but in, in 2A, the list of prerequisites that must be completed is fairly broad. I mean, one of the lines in that is to replace all of the electrical in the entire building. Are we really just referring to Mr. Pert to floors uh, two through nine or Brent, or are we really talking about putting all new plumbing and all new electrical in the entire building before that begins? No, it, it is just in reference to the uh, um, to the floors that be for the hotel, and it's also for uh, uh, those that would need to be replaced. It's not necessarily every every inch of line. Okay, I would I would request then that the city attorney re-review that contract and make that language more clear if that bothers anybody else but it's it's slated a little bit against the developer in my opinion and that needs to be clarified we noticed the same thing a few moments ago thank you sir i'm sorry it's okay. <clears throat> uh, i'd re revise my motion accordingly did somebody say can I'll second. Who made the motion? Ron, do you want to re-second? You're sure. Rodney? Motion? Ron? Yep, I got Ben second by Second Ron. away. Who's on first base? <laughs> motion. Motion. <laughs> motion. Second. Motion by Ben, a second by Ron. Um, Any further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6-1. Item 15.2, consider a resolution increasing the 2013-2014 fiscal financial plan for the Enid Economic Development Authority in the amount of $241,500. Make a motion to approve that. Second. Motion by Mike, second by Ben. Further discussion, please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 15.3, 
consider approval of the purchase of property in the amount of $241,500. Motion to approve. Second by Mike. Second. Second, Second by Ben. Further discussion? Be down. Please cast your vote. Closer. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> Item 15.4. Approval of claims in the amount of $162,460.15. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to point out that there should be a comma after 162 Thank you. by Superior. I was going to bring that up, but. I, I wanted to beat you to it because yes. I needed looked at it. <laughs> Sometimes when you read, you don't even see that period. I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ben. With a correction made. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. We'll now adjourn to re reconvene as the Enid City Commission. Item 17, public discussion. There is no one signed up, so we will have no public discussion. Item 18, consider convening into executive session to perform the annual performance evaluation of City Manager Eric Benson and to consider renegotiating the employment contract with City Manager Eric Benson and to reconvene into regular session to take any necessary action. Make a motion to uh, go into executive session. I'll second. Motion by Mike, a second by Rodney. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0.